Today we'll be going over a complete disassembly and then reassembly of a CV axle. Before starting, it's important to properly secure the axle in a vise to avoid any injury to you or damage to the axle. As you see here, we've added duct tape so as not to scratch the axle. We'll begin with the inner CV joint removal. The inner joint is the easier of the two to remove, and if you need to remove both, you should always begin by removing the inner joint. First, we'll need to remove the clamps from the inner boot. No special tool is required. Most types of bands cannot be reused, so no need to save them. Once the bands are removed, the inner boot slides off the joint and out of the way. Next, remove the joint's retaining clip, which holds its inner assembly inside the housing. It's visible at the bottom of the housing cup and can be taken out easily. Once the clip is gone, the housing will slide right off, leaving the inner assembly still on the shaft. For the sake of visibility, the excess grease will need to be wiped clean. With the grease gone, we can see the retaining clip that holds the inner assembly onto the axle bar. Using a special pair of pliers, the clip can be spread apart and removed, allowing the assembly to come right off the shaft. It's important to remember which side of the assembly faces up and which side faces down. You'll notice the sides are not the same and therefore need to be put on correctly in order to work. Make sure the axle is safely secured in the vise. To remove the outer CV joint, remove the bands that secure the boot and discard them. With the bands gone, the boot can be moved out of the way so the grease can be wiped off. Removing an outer joint can be difficult. Some Polaris axles are designed differently and are serviced like the inner joint, but for all others, this is the only way to remove an outer joint. With the joint facing down, leave the outer nut on but sticking out beyond the edge of the threads. It can be most helpful to start by tapping the outer nut with your hammer like this. By doing so, the inner ring will tend to center itself around the shaft, making the joint removal possible. Bend the joint away from you, exposing the inner race or star-shaped piece. Hold the tack hammer on the exposed race and strike the other end of the tack hammer instead of striking the joint itself. It's important to begin with light taps that help center the compression clip, as you see here, before increasing the intensity of the blows. Eventually, the joint will come off. After the joint has been removed, the compression ring on the end of the shaft may be damaged, but replacing it is simple. Be sure to remove dirt and debris from the groove. It should be noted that a new ring may need to be reshaped to properly fit the groove. It should, however, be a tight fit. Secure the joint in the vise and carefully place the shaft into the joint rather than the other way around. Use about three quarters of the grease in the joint housing. It's important to have some left over for later steps. Set the axle on the joint, but do not force it down into the joint. Using a screwdriver, 
you must guide the compression ring centered into its intended position. By centering the clip properly, we ensure that it compresses and does not bend or break before it expands in its groove to lock the axle in place. A soft metal hammer is used to tap down the axle shaft into the joint. If you don't have a soft metal hammer, brace the axle with a piece of lumber against the end of the shaft to protect the splines. Tug on the axle to make sure the shaft is hammered all the way down. Apply the remaining grease around the axle shaft and position the boot on the joint. Before installing any bands, always remember to burp the boot. Wedge a flathead screwdriver between the boot and the axle shaft. Doing so releases any excess air to prevent the boot from ballooning or collapsing during use. Next, install the clamps. Here we use a professional banding clamp. Yours may differ. Whatever type of band is used, make sure the boot is tightly secured. Make sure the bands do not slice the boot during this process. Secure the axle shaft in the vise. Always remember, put the boot on the shaft before the joint. Keep in mind which side of the inner assembly is which. The flush end of the race cage should face inward toward the other joint. The recessed end faces out. Slide the assembly onto the shaft. The retaining clip will slip into the groove on the shaft holding the assembly in place. Remove the shaft and secure the joint housing in the vise. Empty three quarters of the grease into the housing cup before inserting the shaft. Align the ball bearings within the tracks inside the housing. With the shaft and the joint housing, the retaining clip snaps into place easily. No tool is necessary to do this. Squeeze out the rest of the grease around the axle shaft and slide the boot into place. When burping the inner boot, make sure the joint is in the middle of its range of motion. Always remember to burp the boot. Wedge a flathead screwdriver between the boot and axle. This will release any excess air and prevent it from ballooning or collapsing during use. Now the clamps are the last thing to be put on. Just like with the outer joint, the clamps need to be tight. Be careful not to slice or damage the boot. 